next speaker is read his bio. I'm going to take the tender out of his story. So I will let him do the story. All I'm going to say is that he has shown remarkable and extraordinary ability to show how to forgive and how to work for peace, empathy. So I think we're very fortunate to have him here, Rice William. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This is the greetings that Muslims exchange among each other. Like Shalom Aleichem among the Jews, Namaste among the Hindus, and peace be with you among Christians. Thank you, Mr. Vuyan, for your introduction. Good afternoon. Well, in an era where we see every day all around us violence motivated by revenge, the concept of forgiveness may seem as old. That is not true. The recent research indicates that forgiveness just might cure the despair of our modern culture and that and spiritually but physically as well. My qualification to talk, uh, to talk about that comes not from my formal education. I'm an IT specialist, not a doctor, but from my own personal experience. I am the survivor of a hate crime. Before the end of my speech, I will talk about that. But allow me first to tell you that forgiveness saved my life. So let me begin by asking a few questions. How should we define forgiveness? What is it? What is it not? Is anything unforgivable? Can't forgive? Well, so first, what is it? For our purposes here, let us accept the informal definition offered by the famous Mayo Clinic in its and past of revenge, and at best, it can lead to feelings of understanding, empathy, and compassion for the one who caused harm. And what is it not? Well, it is not a denial, justification, or minimization of the wrong that was done. It does not mean that all criminals should go free. The forgiveness we are talking about can happen without any exoneration. The other three questions are more difficult to answer. But let us assume for the moment that impossible as it sounds, nothing is unforgivable and held both mentally and physically. If this is true, the implications for the healthcare professionals are profound. To reconnect with the individual or to a society, and it allows the, the victims to let go of stress and to stop identifying as a victim. One of the first people who studied this as a science is Robert N. Wright from the University of Minnesota and the founder of International Forgiveness Institute. In the 1980s, he concluded that failure to forgive can result in loss of sleep, higher blood pressure, greater risk of heart disease, and even decreased life expectancy. Researchers like Kathleen Lawler, C.E. Thurston, Kevin Sebold, and Zhu Zheng have come to this conclusion that forgiveness, decreasing anxiety and depression, number three, decreased poor habit such as alcohol and cigarette use, 
Number four, increasing physical fitness by decreasing the draw on glucose caused by rumination. At Duke University, researchers studying HIV patients noted the strong correlation between forgiveness and improved immune system function. They also noted that the forgiveness result in improved mortality, improved mortality rates across the general population. And this, this research is just a scratch of the surface. I am not a researcher, and I can talk only from my own personal experience. And my story begins 10 days after 9-11. I was working at a bandana, sunglasses, baseball cap, and he had a double barrel shotgun that he pointed directly at my face. I offered him the cash and begged him not to shoot me. He was not looking at the money though, he was looking at me. And then he mumbled the question, where are you from? Before I could say more than excuse me, he shot me from four feet away with a double barrel shotgun. And I couldn't believe that he shot me. I felt it first, like a million bees stinging my face, and then I heard the sound like an explosion. I looked under the floor and saw blood was pouring like an open faucet from the right side of my head. Frantically, I placed both hands, screaming, Mom, very loudly. And after a few seconds, the gunman left the store. And I thought I was dying. I ran to the next door barber shop and, and I grabbed one of them and I screamed, Please call 911. I'm dying. I want to die today. While he made a quick call, I caught myself in the mirror and I could not believe that it was my face. A few minutes earlier, I had been a smiling boy. A bright future had laid in front of me. But suddenly, in the instant, it takes to pull the trigger. I was ugly and half dead. The ambulance workers found me running around screaming in the parking lot. And on my way to the hospital, my eyes were getting closed, my brains were shutting down, and my mouth was moving like a machine as I was reciting all the verses from the Holy Quran and I was asking God, please do not take me today. Please give me a chance to leave. Around 1.30 p.m. I arrived at the hospital and finally five hours after the shooting incident, I passed out. I survived. Disaster one after another one. As a result of this gunshot, I lost a tooth which was thankfully replaced. I lost a vision in one eye. I was in the Air Force in Bangladesh. I had a better than perfect vision, 20 by 10. If his aim was a little better, I would have blinded both eyes. When my father heard what had happened to me, he suffered a stroke. My medical bills were piling up. It went up to $60,000, and I didn't know how to pay that. I contacted Red Cross, and after several weeks of back and forth communication, Red Cross told me I qualified for one week's worth of groceries. I could no longer work and could not pay rent. I lost my home. As I could not go back to my country because of my medical treatment. Not only that, from this extra report you can see that my face was peppered with bullet fragments which had dug themselves into my skull. I mean, still, the list is long but I don't want to bore you by telling all this. But at the same time, some good things happened too. A friend of mine took me in. I had a place to leave. And doctor performed surgeries without knowing how to be paid. And a friend gave me a scholarship to go to school. As a result, with the help of good people, I was eventually getting my life back on track. I felt things were going fine, but not really. I felt something was missing. I was lucky enough to go to Muslim religious pilgrimage to Mecca. And it was there I realized that hate and revenge may bring temporary satisfaction, but they never bring peace or solution to any situation. They only bring more disaster and misery. And it was there, terribly. I did not see any value in him suffering as well. And I thought 
if he was given a chance to live, who knows, he might make him a better person. So with clarity, I knew what to do. The U.S. Supreme Court asking for clemency for my shooter, Mark Sturman. But despite all my efforts, Mark Sturman was executed in July 20, 2011. But before that, he was a changed man. Let me show you a 55 seconds video that, uh, that Mark Sturman uh, gave a week before he was executed. Uh, Mr. Reyes, thank you for your, your inspiring act of, of compassion towards me. You have forgiven me. You have forgiven the unforgivable. And I have a lot of love and respect for you. For the Patels, the Hassans, thank you all for what you all have done. Uh, the question is, if I don't make it, what do I want you to carry on? Man, just what you're doing today is, is remarkable to the world, put the world to rights. You know, that's, that's a remarkable thing you're doing. And just continue with the human rights movement because you are touching so many people. I've been getting so inspired now. And that right there strengthens me. So, dude, just rock on. Thank you for giving me. So clearly, this man had changed. He benefited from my forgiveness, and I had benefited too. From the moment I decided to formally and publicly forgive him, I found a peace and wholeness that had been missing since the day of the shooting. And finally, I felt like that heavenly Lunesta butterfly came into my forehead and made me feel better. I no longer identified as a victim, but as a survivor, and eventually as a thriver. I think nothing is. Can forgiveness be taught? Well, my organization, World Without Hate, is dedicated to that belief that it is possible. Right, Michael? So does forgiveness have an impact upon human health? Clearly, many people believe that, and my story proves that. I hope that someone from this audience will take up this challenge and continue that research. I humbly thank you for your attention. Thank you.